If you, uh, if you have a, um, a tool or if you have a product that comes into the marketplace that nobody cares about um, except for you, it, 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 it's going to be, it's going to be a, a hopeless disaster. If you, if you try and create something that's going to be for a very, very small market, you're not going to be happy. It's not going to work out. And if you create something that winds up costing too much or is too complicated for use, you're going to lose. So a lot of, com a lot of companies come to us and they say, oh, we've got this. And that's the first three things we look at. Who's going to buy this? Um, how much are they going to be willing to pay for it? And can you be made at the, at the price point that you're, you kind of need to have it at? And if the answer to any of those is no, then we go and do a, a design scrub to figure out how we, can, um, how we can make it. Put it into the marketplace and make this guy happy or gal happy um, and, uh, and make customers happy as well. So we have a program called Design Profit and in essence we put it in there and the software gives us a hand and pushes everything into the right direction. So that's, that's kind of how we make things work. A lot of people put a big uh, emphasis on, oh, we have robots. Did you design for a robot? Robots are blind one-armed idiots. Can you put it together with your hand behind your back and your eyes closed? No, then you can't do the job. It, don't, don't even think about buying a robot. If Elon Musk, if I'd have known him then, I would have told him exactly that. You are wasting your money because his car is not designed for a robot, period. So those are the kinds of things. Um, when, when I talk to executives, I, I tell them that their product um, and their success rate is going to be, uh, is going to be 10% technology, 90% psychology. That's the way it is. And uh, there's nothing in there for finance because if you keep those ratios in mind, if you're dealing with people or you're dealing with customers or you're dealing with the design of the product and you have that ratio, it'll all work out always. So Yeah, great. Yeah. So maybe a quick question here because I think you highlight more about um, how to be creative and just design a problem that matters to people. When it comes to Elon Musk, for example, or Steve Jobs, they have like a chaotic mind. I don't know what's your um, way of thinking of them when you spoke with them and it was, for example, Elon Musk. What kind of maybe characteristic you think could be a good point and maybe also downside? I don't know if you can answer that for a student, maybe just to, to be different. And that's why we need to be different. And not a, yeah, as a mm. leader and CEO, because we don't have this figure. It's rare to find people who are deep in tech and also leader and likable as a, as a figure as well. So what's your analysis yeah. for that? Well, that's, that's kind of tough. Um, I, I don't know how to do, I, I know what I know cold, um, but I, I don't, I don't really, to me, um, to me, a leader first off is going to be something that nobody thinks that a leader should be. And that's humble. If, um, if you're arrogant, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I met, um, I met a lot of people when I first went to Ford in Japan. And one of the people that I met was Mr. Toyota, the guy who ran Toyota. And, um, and, um, I was in a big meeting. There was 18, 18 of us that went to Japan. Two of us were grade eight, grade nine kind of engineers. Everybody else was a director or a VP or way up there. And these guys that, uh, these executives, um, were a little bit on the arrogant side. And um, because at that time, Toyota was small compared to Ford. And everybody knew that um, Henry Ford I had uh, given Toyota um, rights to use the Ford standard system. And it's like 
I don't know, hundreds of thousands of pages. Everything from um, how to build a car to chicken soup, everything was in those books. Anyway, the Ford guys were a little arrogant, and, um, and Mr. Toyota said something that the other guys didn't really get because their interpreters wouldn't tell them um, what exactly Mr. Toyota said. But my interpreter, um, I had just saved her from getting run over by a forklift truck. Now her shoes got wrecked because I pulled her out of the way and the forklift truck ran over her shoes, but um, she felt a little bit of an obligation. And Mr. Toyota said something and I said, what did he say? And she said, where there's arrogance, there's opportunity. That's opportunity to defeat, right? Because everybody in the Orient, or I'm, I've been told I have to use Asia, but everyone in Asia kind of reads one book. It's a book called um, The Art of War by Sun Tzu. That book, okay? This book, this book right here tells you how to be a good general. Actually, if you're a good general, you're a good leader. If you're a good leader, it doesn't matter what you're leading. As long as you put things into perspective, that, that, that works. And so, number one on the hit parade for a good leader is hum humble. Um, know, know your limitations, to quote Dirty Harry. I don't know if you ever saw that movie, but um, anyway, you have to know what you're good at and what you're not. Um, I think that uh, that uh, the 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 state that you have to be in is to try and stay as calm as possible. Now, that's not me. I'm not very good at that. Um, I have a tendency to be a little too passionate, or get a little too angry, or laugh a lot. And that's you, you got to be a little more stoic than that. But it's good to have that kind of that kind of knowledge. And you, you have to continuously remember that there are other people in the room that probably are smarter than you. And um, there's no such thing as the smartest guy in the room because no matter what the topic is, somebody else is going to know something you don't know. And, um, and those kinds of attributes, I think, is what I saw in Elon Musk. Certainly he reads a lot, and I found that most people that I've, um, I've got to know over the years that, uh, that, uh, that are good leaders, they read a lot. One of my favorite leaders was uh, uh, at Ford Motor Company, Mr. Jerosik, Max Jerosik. Max Jerosik read voraciously. I, I've never seen anybody consume a book as fast as him. I, at first I thought he was just kidding, but he really, he really can, he could zip through memo after memo. He knew all kinds of stuff. And this is prior to, you know, Google and the internet and stuff like that. It's very, very difficult to keep up with that guy because he was continuously learning, continuously striving toward, you know, I don't want to say nirvana, but it's the only thing I can think of. An, uh, education can be a lot of different things. It doesn't necessarily have to come out of a book. And it doesn't have to have a formula attached to it. But you can find out lots of stuff um, by going down an alley in, in, in Thailand, in, in Bangkok, just watching what's going on around you. Um, if you're observant, there's lots of things that, uh, that, that, uh, that you can see that a lot of the rest of the people miss out on. And I think a good leader is observant. He, he or she is going to be watching all the time for what's, uh, what's going on.